Good morning to everyone, to Lazaro Manuel, to our sign language interpreter, and above all, to everyone tuned in to this briefing. Today's results are not good. Today, we regret to report the death of three people yesterday. We offer our condolences to their family and friends. The first was a 94-year-old woman from Havana with comorbidities. She developed symptoms on August the 16th and was admitted to hospital on the 18th. She spent 10 days in intensive care and suffered complications linked to the virus from the outset. These complications worsened and, despite the efforts of our professionals and national and international scientific resources, on August the 31st, her clinical profile began to deteriorate and yesterday, September 1st, she went into cardiorespiratory arrest and could not be revived. We reiterate our condolences. The other patient was a 65-year-old man, also from Havana, and again with pre-existing health conditions. He was admitted to hospital on August 23rd when his symptoms began. He was transferred to the intensive care unit on August 26th after experiencing some complications. By August 30th, he had shown some improvement. However, on August 31st, he suddenly went into cardiac arrest, from which it was not possible to revive him. Once again, we offer our condolences to his friends and family. The third patient was a 65-year-old woman from Havana, again with comorbidities. She was admitted to hospital on August 16th. Following some complications on August the 20th, she was transferred to intensive care, where she remained for the next 14 days. Unfortunately, the patient began to suffer some complications on August 20th, with her clinical profile deteriorating by the 31st. Despite efforts, she could not be revived and died. I repeat, today we report the unfortunate death of three people testament to how dangerous this virus is and why we must be increasingly rigorous and strictly comply with the established measures. Once again, I reiterate our condolences to the family and friends of the deceased. Today, 1,206 people are hospitalized in Cuba 28 are under observation. There are 610 suspected cases and 568 confirmed active cases. Yesterday, over 5,000 samples, 5,546, were processed in our various molecular biology laboratories. I will remind the population that work is ongoing to increase this number in order to screen more people, some with risk factors, others without, and in so doing, detect as many COVID-19 cases as possible, especially among asymptomatic people. 1,900 of the samples were processed at the Pedro Curi Tropical Medicine Institute, 796 in Via Clara's Hygiene, Epidemiology and Microbiology Center, 370 
in Havana's, 282 in Santiago de Cuba's, 658 in the Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology Center Lab, 423 in the Hermanos Almajeras Hospital Laboratory, 230 in the Molecular Immunology Center, 215 in the Civil Defense Labs, 186 in the Naval Hospital, 164 in the National Center for Genetics, 161 in the Manuel Fajardo Hospital Lab, and 141 in the Fructoso Rodriguez Hospital. As you can see, both the number of samples and institutions processing them are increasing. Of the samples processed, 61 tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. This brings the total number of samples processed in the entire country since the pandemic began to 408,727, of which 4,126 people, or 1.01% of all cases, have tested positive for the virus. As I always mention, samples from all of the country's provinces and the Isle of Youth Special Municipality were tested. 131 from Artemisa, the most, 4,202 from Havana, 168 from Matanzas, 340 from Via Clara, 138 from Ciego de Avila, 136 from Santiago de Cuba, and so on and so forth from all of the country's territories, and consistent with the epidemiological situation in each one. Of the 61 positive cases diagnosed yesterday, 60 are Cubans and one is a foreigner. 51 or 83.6% are confirmed case contacts. I repeat, this is the group at highest risk of contracting the virus. This means that 3,673 people or 90.4% of all diagnosed cases in Cuba had contact with someone who had previously tested positive for the virus. Of the 61 cases diagnosed yesterday, the source of infection linked to 10 is yet to be determined. Despite having located the source of infection linked to a series of cases reported over recent days, Work is still underway to identify the source of infection in 28 cases reported over the last 15 days. Yesterday, no one to have tested positive for the virus contracted it abroad, meaning the imported cases remain at 363. Of the 61 diagnosed cases yesterday, 24 are male for 50.4% of all cases, while 37 are female for 2,048 people, or 49.6% of all diagnosed cases. As you can see, similar rates between both sexes. 34, or 55.7% of the 61 cases yesterday were asymptomatic at the time of testing, representing 2,000 406 people, or 58.3% of all diagnosed cases on the island since the pandemic began. By age group, 11 positive cases diagnosed yesterday are under the age of 20. In fact, all are under the age of 18. For a total of 426 children, or paediatric cases, to have tested positive for the virus in Cuba. 
380 or 89.2% of which have responded well to treatment and been discharged from hospital. Let me reiterate that despite responding well to treatment, however, the risk is still high, especially given the large numbers of children and young people being diagnosed with the virus. Meanwhile, 22 people diagnosed with COVID-19 yesterday are between 20 and 39 years of age. 20 cases are between 40 and 59, and 8 are over the age of 60. As I mentioned, all of the cases diagnosed yesterday are autochthonous. 46 belong to Havana, 7 to Artemisa, 6 to Ciego de Avila, and 2 to Pinar del Rio. The cases from Pinar del Rio belong to the municipality of La Palma and are linked to an outbreak in that area. The seven cases from Artemisa belong to the municipalities of Mariel with one, San Cristobal with four, and Candelaria with two cases. The six cases from Ciego de Avila are from the municipalities of Ciego de Avila with four, Mahagua with one, and Venezuela with one case. The 46 cases from Havana belong to the municipalities of Diez de Octubre with 10, La Lisa and Arroyo Naranjo with six each, Boyeros, five, Plaza, four, three each from Cerro, Habana del Este and Centro Habana, two from Regla, and Cotorro, Marianao, Habana Vieja, and Playa with one case each. Yesterday's results by province therefore mean that Havana continues to have the highest confirmed case rate per 100,000 inhabitants over the last 15 days, standing at 23.70, higher than yesterday's rate. Artemisa follows with a rate of 13.21, also higher than yesterday's figure. Matanzas has a rate of 5.14, then comes Pinar del Rio with 4.97, Ciego de Avila with 3.43, Las Tunas with 1.31, Via Clara with 0.64, Maya Beque with 0.26, and come away with 0.13. This means that Cuba's rate stands at 5.97 per 100,000 inhabitants over the last 15 days, only slightly higher than yesterday's rate. To summarize, of the 4,126 people who have been diagnosed with the virus thus far in Cuba, 568, or 13.7%, are active hospitalized cases. 546 of the 568, or 96.1%, are clinically stable. At the beginning of this briefing, we reported the death of three people yesterday. This brings the COVID-19 death toll on the island to 98 and a mortality rate of 2.37%, lower than the global rate of 3.35% and regional rate which stands at 3.47%. As I always mention, two people were evacuated at the start of the pandemic. Yesterday, a positive result. 63 people were discharged from hospital, a slightly higher amount than the number of positive cases diagnosed yesterday. This means that, to date, 3,458 people, or 84% of all confirmed cases in Cuba have recovered from the virus, the majority of whom are back living their normal lives 
and undertaking their usual activities. After completing the mandatory 15-day post-COVID-19 monitoring period. Today, five patients continue to be in a critical state and 17 reported as serious. I want to stress just how difficult this virus is to treat. Yesterday, a serious patient passed to critical. Three serious patients passed to closely monitored and two new patients joined the group of those reported as serious. This is the COVID-19 situation in Cuba, with important episodes of local transmission in certain areas, above all in Havana, and which have led to the adoption of a new set of measures, measures which everyone must comply with. Now we are going to turn our attention to the world. We thank geographers Roberto Gonzalez, Roberto Romero, for the map which you can see on the screen. You will notice that the countries highlighted in dark red or brown almost are those with over 3 million cases. On the right, you can see the total number of confirmed cases and fatalities for each country. As of yesterday, COVID-19 continues to be present in the same 185 countries. Yesterday, 250,105 people were diagnosed with the virus for a total of 25,509,000 135 confirmed cases since the start of the pandemic. Yesterday, 4,054 people died of the virus for a total of 850,902 COVID-19 fatalities and a mortality rate of 3.35%. The region of the Americas continues to be the epicenter of the pandemic, with 111,590 cases reported yesterday, for a total of 13,508,242 confirmed cases, or 52.95% of all cases worldwide. 2,000 130 people died of the virus in the region yesterday for a COVID-19 death toll of 469,897 and a mortality rate of 3.47%. Now we will look at the regional situation in greater detail. If you turn your attention to the table shown, you will see that the United States and Brazil, highlighted in brown, are the two countries hardest hit by the pandemic globally. We can see that the United States currently has over 6 million confirmed cases, 6,031,013 to be exact, and 183,000 598 COVID-19 fatalities. Then comes Brazil with 3,908,274 confirmed cases and 121,381 fatalities. Although it occupies fifth place in the world, in the region, Peru places third followed by Colombia, Mexico, Chile, Argentina, Canada, Bolivia and Ecuador among the worst affected countries in the Americas. For confirmed cases and deaths, Cuba places 22nd in the region. This is the information that we have on the behaviour of the pandemic in Cuba and the world.